So on this this week round, we're doing a best talk show host. Jack's fumbling through his notes as if to say, oh, I don't think I've written one for this. I have. Um, so Where the fuck's how that about I know, Bryn, I found you want to take it, it away? Went first last week, anyway. So yeah. yeah. Okay then. Sense. I found it. It's just for some reason it's completely in the wrong place. Okay talk then. Talk show host, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right, Bryn. Yep. Yeah. You Bring have around you one minute forty yeah. to do a pitch, and then we'll uh, take it to Jack. Right, your time starts now. This talk show host was born in New Rochelle, New York on April 28th, 1950 to a Scottish mother and an Italian-American father. After graduating from Andover High School, this person obtained a bachelor's degree in speech therapy from Emerson College, which is where he first became interested in comedy. He first appeared on The Tonight Show back in 1977, performing a comedy routine, and in 1992 he was offered the hosting role after longtime host Johnny Carson stepped down. Over the course of his career, he would interview many celebrities with his best best interviews being with people such as Hugh Grant, Arnold Schwarzenegger and ex-president Barack Obama. Um, towards the end of his time hosting The Tonight Show, he would leave to make his own program after contr- after a controversy with future host Conan O'Brien. His own show would not perform well and he would return to host The Tonight Show for four years between 2010 and 2014 before being replaced by Jimmy Fallon, who still does it now. Uh, outside of hosting talk shows, this person donates a lot to charity and is a car fanatic. And yes, making yet another show about his love affair with cars. He owns approximately 286 vehicles, and among his prize collection, he has two Doblestein cars, two cars owned by owner of RKO Films, Howard Hughes, and one of the nine remaining 1963 Chrysler Turbine cars. I'm of course talking about the guy whose jaw would give Popeye a run for his money, Jay Leno. Nice, nice. Bit outside the box. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no, not a big... Exit there. Just a, I'm talking about Joe Leather. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, it, 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 it'd be good if you weren't, and it is, of course. Jay Leno. <laughs> uh, I think I missed. Did I say jubilant Jay Leno? No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that was what was supposed to be said. Oh, well, you missed the good bit. <laughs> yeah, I missed the last little bit. <laughs> oh, um, right. Not, yeah, Jay Leno. I, to be honest, it's one of those ones. I think because he's American, it's Amer- American-based shows. I haven't seen a lot of them. Yeah. So it's hard, but he, he, you know, he's very well thought of, isn't he? I think um, the thing is, as well, is I didn't just do it for the Tonight Show stuff. I like the, the car side of it. He'll probably be yeah. interested. Jack, yeah, I didn't know he did that. Interested. That's quite he's interesting. He is the car stuff, nuttiest yeah. car guy. Like he has, I think the Jay Leno car show, or whatever it's called, I can't remember what it's called. He, like. he owns loads of weird, and wonderful cars just to save them. He just, oh, really? he just bought them and put them I in a garage. I oh. think the channel was. Uh, I think the show was on like Dave or something. Right, right, so yeah. Right. Seen it, like, Just so that they're like part of his collection because in years to come they'll be like classic. They're already classic yeah. stuff, but he's like they're going to go. Because uh, the oh, Howard okay. Hughes thing, <laughs> RKO films don't exist anymore. That was like 1930s to 1950s, and the guy I think went into other businesses and then carted it basically and died. Mm. And then because that was the one thing, and because it was the induction of the film industry, if that makes sense, it's like RKO films were the people that made uh, It's a Wonderful Life, Casablanca. So, just having a car owned by the guy that basically got the film industry to where it is now must be like cool to have. And like having one yeah. of nine of this or one of thirty of this yeah. or whatever. He's got some fucking money's worth of cars. Right, sweet. Yeah. 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 Um, unfortunately, it's not based on the cars, but I get it. Mm-hmm. It's cool. That's just um, the added information. Yeah. Um, I haven't really got much more to say about that. Yeah. 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 Jack, ready for it? next one? Let's go. Your time starts now. He's 60 years old. He's an English television and radio presenter, film critic, actor and comedian. Best known for presenting BBC One chat show. After leaving the BBC, he began hosting a new chat show on ITV. He began his TV career as a programme researcher before debuting as a TV presenter for The Last Resort on Channel 4 in 1987. (coughs) Uh, Over the next decade, he had several radio and TV roles. Uh, many through his own production company Channel X. In 1995 he sold his stake in Channel X and embarked on a career with the BBC. In 1999 he took over presenting the film programme from Barry Norman and also presenting his own radio show while two years later he began hosting his chat show. For this he won the BAFTA award for the best entertainment performance in 2004, 2006, 2007. By 2006 uh, he he was believed to be the BBC's highest paid star. In 2005, he was made an officer of the Order of the British Empire for services to broadcasting. 
He has been involved in controversies throughout his broadcasting career. As a result, in 2008, he wrote a semi-autobiographical work titled Why Do I Say These Things, detailing some of these experiences. In 2008, during an interview with Gwyneth Paltrow, he told her that he would fuck her. And in June 2006, when a Conservative Party leader, David Cameron, appeared on his show, he, he began a line of questioning relating to Conservative ex-Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, culminating in the question, did you or did you not have a wank thinking of Margaret Thatcher? <laughs> <laughs> he was defended by the BBC publicly, but repeat showings of the interview have been banned. I think he's a bit of a legend, uh, maybe a bit of a knob sometimes. Um, <laughs> but you live and learn. He is the one and only, the wibbly-wobbly, Jonathan Wass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, both strong, I think. Yeah. If you want to see more of these shenanigans, head over to YouTube or listen to us on Spotify.